All right, welcome back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is January 3rd, 30th, 2021. I am your host, Luis Palacio, with my co-host, Chris. Hey, it's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. How you doing today, Luis? I am doing... Uh, I'm being a nerd. I'm just, like, playing games all day, you know? All day, every day, man. Bro. Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. Oh, my you God. can't get dude. enough can't get enough in anywhere like i've been at a couch potato this entire time today so because <clears throat> i literally just been playing pokemon all day um but not pokemon go unfortunately because there isn't really much to go out these days until today but we'll talk about that in just a moment however we're once again here to talk about all pokemon go related news updates and ranting about the game because we love the game just as much as you do Let's remind everybody that we are part of a professional network. Chris is always in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> um, please check us out, at so, uh, the pro Pokemon Professor. Ah, I can't even speak anymore. <laughs> Dot com slash Pro for Podcast. <laughs> wonderful people to work with every single time. Have wonderful podcasts every single place to talk to. Uh, yeah, just be part of the community if you can. All right, Chris. I guess we talked or said or introduced ourselves too long. How's your week been? Too long. I don't know, brother. It's only been a minute. It's um, been, it's dude, a I, how the hell have we been talking for a minute? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's been a good week, honestly. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of fun uh, going after all these shadow Pokemon. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, you know the electric and steel types have definitely been really uh, nice. You know they're not something too common in Florida, I would say. Right. Um, I don't have any new, uh, four stars, but, uh, I think the only shiny Pokemon of note was, uh, you and I actually did a lucky trade for a shiny Rylou, and, uh, I was able to get a lucky shiny Rylou. The IVs aren't too spectacular, but, uh, you know, that's not, that's not too concerning to me. It's not like I traded you a 93 or a 96. Or right, whatever. right, yeah. Um, so, you know, just the fact that when that has a Mega, we'll be able to power it up easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm very excited for that. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I myself actually haven't gotten that much at all. Like, not even a hundo. And that's because, uh, yeah, I know, right? It's all the grinding, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, no, aside, I mean, that was only the weekend. But, you know, the entire week, dude, I've been like dead on center and just restocking this entire week because I was low on Pokeballs, Ultra Balls, Grey Balls, everything that I could actually have, unfortunately. So I was just like, let the Gold Plus just go on, on, on stops and let me just grind the stops for a couple of days. I mean, uh, if I would have just gone somewhere and grind, cool, but I've been working this entire week. Like, literally, this weekend was my entire day off, so I really didn't have a chance to... And this weekend, something, of course, came out that unfortunately did take away all our time. So, not much to say about that. But, there is something that I did get today while I was sitting and being a couch potato. So, um, just as the, uh, as the event started, I did get another shiny bolter just sitting in the couch. So, I did Ooh. get a shiny. I did, of course, the lucky trade with uh, Chris. But no hondos since then. So at least I have something to talk about. Um, aside from the Bulbasaur that I already told you guys about. There is some PvP Pokemons that I was able to get specially. And namely Shadow. So I'm just going to go through the list here. I did get this rank 1 Cyndaquil. For, uh, or I'm sorry. For Diplosion Shadow for Grey League. Dude. Rank 1. Top notch. Thank you goodness. I also got this Bay Leaf, which is, I think, a rank 7 or something. Shadow, not bad, especially since I never actually had a good Bay Leaf since then. Every mm -hmm. single one of them has been good and going. And I don't think I got any much more. Let me check my uh, my GBL stuff around here. So that's that. Uh, yeah, that's about it for now. But yeah, at least some wins, you know. Rank 1 is not yeah, in there. Those are awesome, man. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Typlosion to actually get his community name moved back and then all the way to the evolution. Although, we would, what we speculate might happen in the coming days or maybe in the coming weeks. We don't ever know. That was definitely something that we can go through about 
Um, <laughs> very exciting stuff for sure, especially now that we're addicted to this thing. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on the holes, right? I don't think we have anything else to cover that. Um, I'll double check. I mean, like with the new Shadow Pokemon, I've been trying to get like a bunch of them. Uh, I'd say the best one of note was a Shadow Chikorita. I don't think it's sub 10. I think it's like a 17 or something. Mm. Uh, but, you know, any Shadow Pokemon, you re honestly, you're really just doing it for the Pokemon most of the time uh, when it's a Shadow Pokemon. Right. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are bulk points and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I've, I've just really been trying to get the different ones. I think I still need... Like a good ranked uh, Totodile. I think that's like the main one I need. Uh, but yeah, they're really exciting uh, additions to the PvP uh, via Shadow Pokemon. So I am really excited about that. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we're definitely going to see some, uh, some things happen uh, in the coming days for that, for sure. But uh, yeah, I almost forgot to actually say that. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I completely forgot. We actually have a lot of news. A lot of MP news. <laughs> um, completely forgot to talk about those things anyways, but we'll definitely go. So I guess we actually have to get into the news now. Uh, but before we do, there is... Hold on, I got to fix something here. Um, we should rate actually the power plant event that's been going on this entire time. So... You know, electric spawns, uh, pouring ons, electrobites, they're still going on for another day or so. So, um, what do you think, Chris? What how, how do you feel about this event so far? I will give it a very solid 8. I, I think it has earned an 8 in my eyes. I want to say and, the same. Uh, like, not because, you know, it it's given any, like, crazy bonuses or anything. Right. I just think it's a nice mix of Pokemon. Um, I did really like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely uh, something for everybody here, that's for sure. So we something simply just had to go with it at the end of the day. But yeah, no, not too bad. I want to say I got I to gotta give it the same ranking, maybe a 7.5. But the reason why I actually give it an 8 is because of the last part that's coming on right now. And we'll talk about it in just a moment for that <clears throat> and the speculations about it. But um, you know, the Pokemons were nice, uh, a lot of shiny chances for a lot of different things that we haven't been able to catch. I still don't have a damn trash shiny. <laughs> it's same. Yeah, so... Shiny trash running from it. Right. And, I mean, the mixture between that and the Six and the Heritage ones have actually been pretty equal in between, so... Not too bad. However, um, that was only the first part. The second part being the Tingo Rocket Takeover. Which we knew this was going to happen since, you know, they're always, they're, whatever they always say is like, mysterious forces are trying to look into something or whatever. It's, at this point, it's been, it's been more repetitive at, at, than anything. So, Ting, uh, um, Tingle Rocket, Shadow Event, New Shadows. Uh, we did talk about the Shadows last week, but we didn't actually talk about the new shiny Shadows that the uh, leaders had. We had that information in hand, however, we forget, completely forgot about it. So, we'll go through it. Arlo has Bagon again, which, you know, shiny, shiny Bagon is still pretty cool. Um, Sierra has, I believe, Poliwhat. So not too uh, yeah. bad. Not too bad. As a shiny, pretty good, especially since you can evolve it to Politoed and all that. So definitely a good shadow in all between. And now you can flex the shiny. <laughs> uh, and then Cliffs did get... I haven't done that many clips. How many? What was it again? Oh, shoot. That's the one I've done the most, and I kind of forgot what it was. <laughs> Teddy Orsa, now that I remember, yeah. So, Teddy Orsa is the, uh, another Shadow Shiny new for the system. So, surprisingly enough, I didn't get any Shadow Shinies in this rotation, in this last rotation. So, right. which was kind of like a dub, but uh, I, I wasn't really acting looking for them for the reason that Nidoran, Gligar, and the, and what was it, like Grimer? From the last uh, rotation, I really didn't want any of them, even if they were shadowed at that point, you know. I, it really depends. It really depends. Um, I'd say these ones are definitely a really good mix. Right. Yeah. Like no. Bacon is just so good. 
Oh yeah, definitely, definitely something better than that regard. So I'm okay with it coming back and all that at the end of the day for that reason. So uh, especially, I, even though, you know, Salamence is not that great, but every now and then Shell gonna appears in the meta for anything that, you know, the Silt Arena may come up with in the end of the day. Like it's a coming meta, but you never know. <clears throat> in the end of the day, we... Since the expansion of so many Pokemons, I feel like some Pokemons are just starting to lose this uh, shininess of it. Ha ha have you seen the regular, like, Asumeril core matchups in GBL or something like that? Or, or have you seen a meta shift since the last few months? Um, not personally, not too much, uh, other than seeing, you know, like, Walring mm -hmm. in there. Right. Um, I, I did notice... Uh, very recently, there was a lot of uh, dark Pokemon. That was like at the beginning of uh, the last, uh, uh, you know, few rotations. And I think that's, uh, you know, people's way of countering things like uh, Grass Hole. Right. Um, you know, just picking chunky Pokemon like Scrafty and uh, Umbreon that can, you know, withstand both Bastiodon and Razor Leafers. Um, but other than that, no. Not not recently. I haven't noticed too much of a difference. Well, we'll go into it a, bit, a little bit more when we go to our PvP section. But I definitely think mm -hmm. that uh, I haven't seen as much coverage of the same meta. Like, we still have our powerhouses. But because there's so many new Pokemons coming out every time. And whenever they become more relevant than anything, I feel like that's the case uh, for our meta type top tier Pokemons in the end of the day. But we're still there, here and there, anyways. But however, uh, yeah, so if you didn't have the chance to actually TM frustration away, I'm sorry, by the time you actually hear this, the, uh, the event has actually ended. So uh, at 10, p and 10 a.m. local time was the last um, minute of the event, of that event, part of the event, anyways. However, something else came out that we'll, uh, we'll go over in just a moment here. <laughs> While we go into our topics, research topics of today, of this week. So, uh, since I was actually working on this, might as well go about it. Let's talk, let's talk about the huge amount of news that we have because it is the month of February, literally in a day and a half, probably like less than 24 hours anyways. Uh, <laughs> Uh, around 24 hours. But anyways, um, the dump of news of February is here. The content is Pokemon Go Tour Johto at Hopeful Community Day. <laughs> but the Valentine's Day 2022 event, uh, extra rate passes, and more. So here we go. Here we go. Chris, what is going to be our research breakthrough box for the month of February? Well, well, well. There we go. Oh, baby, I've heard about this. <laughs> okay. The February Research Breakthrough Encounter. Starting Tuesday, February 1st, 2022 at 1 p.m. PST to Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 at 1 p.m. PST. <laughs> For the first time in Pokemon Go, you'll be able to encounter a shiny esper as your uh, research breakthrough it won't always be shiny you'll just have a chance uh but i do really like the shiny just remember there is a gender difference uh so you can either get a male or a female you'll probably have to trade with your friends if you want to get the shiny of the other one hmm. oh my gosh i'm super excited it is a very exciting one one because it's a brand new shiny and two it's a pokemon we don't technically see outside of raids or even race, research break or uh, regular research anyway. So um, yeah. to actually put something as shiny wise, now it's not like it's going to be like the greatest Pokemon in the world either. Um, Esper is Esper. A brand new shiny, that's crazy. Right. However, you only have four chances, especially since February is a, a short month. Actually, yeah. Yes. Four chances. Four is like a maximum you can barely get. Right. And today, for at least for me, it's already been my retro box of my next retro box. They'll definitely have only four chances at this point of forward. So, <clears throat> four chances. It doesn't mean that it won't be in raids. And now that the channel will be available starting to that day, 
we'll definitely, definitely will be able to hunt for the shiny once it, you know, it comes back in raids in other places. Uh, you can get it from 10k eggs, although it has to be new eggs after the shiny is released, so um, definitely something interesting to go about it. Why choose this Pokemon? I'm not entirely sure, but I am welcoming it for the reason that having a new shiny is always welcoming at that regard. So yeah, just get your, uh, your boxes ready, so... We'll definitely cover those when they come around. <clears throat> However, the month of February is jam-packed with events. The very first one, of course, the one that we've all been waiting for is the Gold Door Johto event. This is happening on Saturday, February 26th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. local time. Um, in addition to the freak experience, tickets, and all that. So we actually already talked about Johto. There's a few more things that we'll talk about uh, later on in the news section for sure. Uh, <laughs> you want to take this one when it comes to what's their next community day Pokemon? <laughs> sure. <laughs> right now? Mm-hmm. I got you, I got you. Okay, the February community day. Well, this one is, uh, very interesting. I, I'm sure a lot of you guys would just appreciate me to jump in, but ouch. But ouch. <laughs> I mean... The February community day. <laughs> Just tell it's them gonna what be it hop up, <laughs> and it'll be on uh, February twelfth, uh, Saturday, and uh, it's got an excellent shiny. Uh, but is that all we know right now? Or uh, we know we have more information. I just wanted you oh, to actually do, say, do. yeah, we'll go okay. over the blog of Community Today when it comes out to it. However, Hop it will be our February Community Today. I guess it goes with the team that is a pink Pokemon. Uh, it's definitely not pink when it's shiny though. <laughs> um. Yeah, not till it's final. Not till it's final, yeah. Uh, so it kind of goes over again, just like my co-host has said, Saturday, February 12th will be um, the day of the event. Uh, we'll go over in just a moment, however, uh, what other bonuses and things are. However, are you happy about this one? Um, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't be, but for a shiny hunter, I freaking love this shiny. It's such a uh, such a pretty shiny. Yeah. Probably, in my opinion, uh, probably in my top five for Gen 2. Ah, not bad, not bad. You know, a lot of people are actually been saying that the reason why they're doing this is because it makes... Well, not the reason why, but it's more like they're kind of devaluing some of the shinies that were promised during the Gold Tour event. Uh, I was watching one of the Trainer uh, Tips videos, and the, before this announcement, there was... I don't know, 16 unreleased shiny Pokemon in Gen 2 at the time of uh, of this announcement. And then by this announcement, that takes off three. So there's only like 10 or 9 at this point. But the problem, the problem that we had when Goto or Johto was announced is that, you know, there was a lot of shinies that are going to be boosted throughout the event, especially for the people who use SD between gold and silver and all that. Um... But when it, when the case may be, some shinies has been released since the beginning of this year between Hoot Hoot and Hoppet, and then um, just other things that are just secretly being shiny released at this point. It just makes Gotor a little less exciting because of the reason of not being number one in the sense of what new shiny you're gonna get from here on now. Correct? Um, I mean, like a lot of people uh, just want you know strong. Uh, pseudo legendaries for their calm day, you know, starters for their calm day. Um, but you know, people complain when it's uh, you know, a shiny that they've already got. Um, so you know, a, a highly sought after shiny that uh, you know, we've been awaiting for. I, I don't think uh, there should be any problems with this one. I'm I'm pretty excited personally. Yeah, at the end of the day, is that. But we'll go over that bonuses. Why it's yeah. actually still an exciting Pokemon, nonetheless. Aside from everything. However, we're still on the news of the month of February. So the Season Heritage uh, of Heritage monthly bonus for the month of February is going to be increased Candy XL from Hatching X and two times experience from Hatching X. So if you haven't hatched any eggs at this point, this is the time to do it because uh, getting that extra large candy extra. Now, we don't know how much extra, but it depends on the tier of the egg at this point, I think. Uh, between 2, 5, 10, 12, and 7, I think pretty sure that 
the amount of candy that you get and the amount of extra candy you get is definitely increased by the time this happens. We don't know how much more, though, but it's still a nice addition, nonetheless, if you're trying to max out a lot of Pokemons in the end of the day. Any thoughts? Uh, as someone that doesn't hatch that many eggs, um, I still think it's a really cool bonus. I mean, like, even free-to-play people are going to be, you know, getting more extra large candy. And I'm sure they'll be excited about that. Um, for the people that hatch a bunch of eggs, uh, why wouldn't they be excited? You know, <laughs> I'm uh, a little extra large is super hard to grind for. The only reason why I'm a little bit excited about this is mostly because I do hatch a lot of eggs and the experience is going to be nice every time I do. I'm not going to have a lucky egg running 24-7, especially because, you know, I won't be able to hatch that many eggs throughout weeks in the month of February, but still. Is something to come around. And now, with that excitement out of the way, we still have the raid bosses that we're going to have in February. And this one is an exciting month compared to the bullshit month we had, you know. Heatran, uh, Heatran. Heatran, Heatran. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you want to go over this or? Um, sure. <laughs> um, how about up to the uh, Pokemon Go tour? And okay. Then, um, okay. Okay. Um. So Tuesday, February first, till uh, Wednesday, February 9th, uh, we're gonna have Reggie Rock. Uh, from Wednesday, February 9th till Wednesday, February sixteenth, we're gonna have Reggie Steel, and uh, we we will uh talk about their special moves. Um, hmm. honestly, I, I guess I can talk about it right now. Uh, Reggie Rock will have Earthquake. Uh, Reggie Steel will have. Uh, Zap Cannon, and uh, <laughs> from Wednesday, February sixteenth to February nineteenth, uh, we're gonna have normal form Deoxys with the shiny chance. Um, you know, uh, that's the one that we've already had, and then a uh, sa uh, Saturday, February nineteenth till Tuesday, February twenty second, uh, we're gonna have attack form Deoxys with the shiny chance. Oh, I think you guys see where it's going. Mm. Tuesday, February 22nd to February tw uh, uh, 25th. We're going to have Deoxys Defense Form Shiny. Yo, that's one we've been waiting for. Mm. Now, <laughs> Friday, February 25th till March 1st. We're going to have Speed Form Deoxys with the Shiny Chance. Dude, four different Deoxys to Shiny Hunt if you do not already have the regular one. Uh, but yeah, personally, I'm definitely trying to get that defense. Yeah, definitely, for sure. I, oh my goodness. It's going to definitely going to be a grind. Now, of course, the very first week of the Oxus normal form being uh, introduced or reintroduced into that, into raids, uh, we already kind of like went our way to get the shiny. So I'm okay with yeah. maybe skipping that and having a little extra raid passes for the, for the long run. Yeah, no However, words, please. Attack Form Deoxys, Defend Form Deoxys, and Speed Form Deoxys are brand new shiny Pokemons in the game that we've been waiting for since the beginning of it. And hopefully this will actually be a catalyst for any other form Pokemons that are out there and their shiny abilities. Mm -hmm. Because we need every single one, and I can't believe that we have to raid for every single one at this point. At this point, Niantic is just making money, you know, so... <laughs> However, when it comes to like the other three shiny forms that are now being released, only one out of the four are actually more viable. Of course, Defend Force Deoxys, just like Chris has mentioned, is the top-notch PvP meta Pokemon that you want to have in your team, number one. If you can flex the shiny, you're more welcome to do so. Uh, attack form and, and speed forms really don't do much in the meta, so they're actually just stopped there and there. If you get the shiny, cool. And if not... It's not the worst thing in the world. So, um, that's because you actually get more shinies in other ways. But we'll definitely be grinding out the extra large candy and everything when it comes to Deoxys being literally three weeks of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris did mention Regirock and Registeel the, and with their new moves. Registeel being a potent, once again, very strong Pokemon candidate in the meta because of this new move, Sap Cannon. Destroying the competition of the water types out there. Flying types or anything. Even though he already had good moves, this is going to help them a, definitely a lot more than you think. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, you know, if you match up a water type against it, uh, you could be very confident 
say there's a uh, Blastoise fighting it, normally he wouldn't really have to shield, you know, even if it was a uh, the uh, Focus Blast. Mm -hmm. But with a Zap Cannon possibly coming, yeah, you, you better think he's going to think about shielding now. Oh, yeah, especially after it comes out. So get your Ray Passes ready. Uh, Regirock may not be a great Pokemon, but having another move that actually helps him out may actually do something. And his shiny is just a little bit better than you think. So, <laughs> not there. So, Chris did mention that we're also going to have Gold Tour, um, Johto, Saturday, February 26th, Legendary. So, during those times, we will have Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Lugia, and Ho-Ho. So, all the Johto Legendary Pokemons are going to be there. However, these Pokemon will only and only spawn throughout the local times of between 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. local time in your area. And then after the event is over and after 9.30 p.m., Speedform Deoxys Race will run before and after the time frame of that day. So, get ready because there is a lot to do. <laughs> Out of all the Johto legendaries, which one do you think you're going to be raiding the most? Uh, definitely the Lugia or Ho-Ho. Um, okay. I know that there is a difference when you have one or the other ticket anyways. Um, uh, I'm not too sure about the dogs, but, or I'm sorry, the beasts or dogs, whatever they make it be. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not gonna <laughs> put out any pitchforks. <laughs> yeah, however, if we learn anything from the Kanto event, is that you will need to catch at least one of each to complete the special collection challenge that we're gonna have during the time of the day. So, even if it's only for one, and you need to just catch it, I mean, if you get the shiny, cool or not, but go ahead, and this is a warning for anybody wanting to actually play the event, go ahead and get that race done out of the way as soon as possible. The more you finish that up, the easier everything else gets, because I'm pretty sure that we're also going to be looking for other shinies in raids while the event goes on, uh, mainly Heracross and Corsola being in the raids once again, so... And Corsa being shiny one all together. So, um, and that being said, of course, just get them out of the way and then you can rate whatever you like and then play the event however you like to do. Have you actually noticed that Entei's shiny mark is actually more <laughs> defined than the other ones? <laughs> oh, I. <laughs> I think I know why. why. They do that? I think I know why. It's because um, his tail is white and didn't want oh. the, the markings to not see be sent. Ah, oh, man, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else is fine. I mean, Lugia doesn't actually even go over the marks, so you're fine there. That's just funny, though. <laughs> However, that is not over for the month of February. We do have Mega Pokemons coming through the month of February. From February 1st to February 15th, we'll have Mega Hondo back in rates. And from February 15th to March 1st, we'll have Mega Ampharos back in raids. I'm pretty sure Mega Ampharos is a coexistent when it comes to the Johto events. This is a Johto Pokemon, but with the Mega. So pretty nice either way. We do have raid hours for each one of these Pokemons. However, though, there's only two of the Deox Deoxys that we actually care about. So February 2nd, we'll have Regirock. February 9th, we'll have Registeel. February 16th, we'll have Normal Form Deoxys, and February 23rd, we'll have Defense Form Deoxys. Oh, baby. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting because each one of them is going to run for uh, half a week each, aside from Normal Form, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly surprised uh, they're not giving a raid hour to the other two, um, probably because they know which one people really want. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I need, that, uh, I need that boy. <laughs> Side note, uh, Defense Force Deoxys is a really hard Ray boss to take care of. So you will need a high, strong level party, not just for yourself, but for all the people who are going to Ray with you. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to actually get this one done. So be careful out there. Don't waste your passes you can. And make sure you have a sizable friends party between... If it's high level 5, I think it's possible, but you may need at least 6 or 7 to finish this off. Yeah, I'd say 5 five to 6 high levels for sure. Yeah, because it's it's just going to take away on you, and it's a really, really defense Pokemon, so you just want to go ahead and go through it. Just plan it out throughout that month, or that week at least. Yeah, normally, 
I wouldn't try to head out uh, too much for raid hours, but uh, this is one where, yeah, I'm definitely going to head out for, with a group for this one. We'll plan it out. Don't worry, Chris. Ooh. We'll definitely be out. I do want to go through that, too. Uh, yeah. We still have our weekly one Pokemon going bundles. Uh, so we I still got one remote re free raid passes throughout that. Spidelight hours! Chris, can you elaborate? All right, all right. Uh, I honestly... I think last month's might have actually been better than this month's. Uh, but uh, February 1st, Lit Leo is going to be two times XP for evolving Pokemon. Uh, okay. Uh, February 8th, Spritzy, two times Catch Stardust. Actually not bad if you get uh, the uh, weather bonus too. Uh, we got February 15th with Coughing, two times Catch XP uh, with the Shiny Chance. And then February 22nd, you haven't had enough Voltorb? Well, here's another one. Uh, you got Voltorb Spotlight Hour with two times catch candy. Oh, God. <laughs> um, two out of the four being Shiny Chance. One of them not even being Red Lemon in anything. Spritzy may be okay just because of the Stardust and the uh, Fairy types, of course. Always denominating the meta. Coughing, I've seen plenty. I have plenty. I don't need any more. And Bolter, why? <laughs> he is good for PvP, to be fair. And he did just get the Shadow release. So, you know, if you're looking for extra candy for him, there you go. The I'm almost only done. reason, uh, like, like, the only reason I see for Litleo is if you do not have a mail yet. That is the main reason I would see. Okay. Other than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see your point. I see your point. But hey, spider light hours, spider light hours. I play them, I don't play them. That depends on the good day of uh, good fairness of the day. <laughs> um, and of course, the first one coming out is Tuesday, so be ready, guys. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned because we have more upcoming events. The Lunar New Year, ringing the Lunar New Year from Tuesday, February 1st to Monday, February 7th, which I'm pretty sure we'll have the news tomorrow by Niantic standards. <laughs> Uh, Valentine's Day event on Thursday, February 10 to Monday, February 14, which is a four-day event, can celebrate Valentine's Day and in-game events and activities. An evolutionary line of fairy-type Pokemons will make its Pokemon Go debut. Oh. Hey, Siri, what is fairy types? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm having a brain fart right now. Uh, we the only thing I can think of is... Uh, no, no, that's not... Oh, shoot. All right. Let's see here. Oh. Uh, there is a Flabebe in this way. Oh, dude. It's totally Flabebe. Flabebe, Floette, and Florocles being the fairy type line for the Valentine's Day event. I'm pretty sure we're not going to see Hatterini unless they do literally do a corbel on us. Or mm -hmm. imping them because it is the Valentine's Day event and Flobebe is just more than enough. However, you also see it in the screenshot of the beginning part of the game. So, L legit, that's <laughs> the only thing I can think it would be. Um, right. Other than that, you know, Milsery maybe, but yeah. they're legit calling it a family, which, you know, usually would be a would three line evolution. Tough. You're definitely right. Yeah. Definitely Plus, right. being a, a, you know, a flower type, or not a flower type, but a flower. Uh, shape Pokemon in the end of the day, so <laughs> uh, at this point, you're not going to surprise us, Niantic. We already know at this point what the hell is going on here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so pretty good so far. Uh, and then we're also going to have the Go Tour lead up event from Friday, February 18th to Friday 25th. Get ready for the Pokemon Go Tour Johto with a Pokeball Focus event. So that means they are going to give us a lot of Pokeballs, and we need Yay. them because I'm pretty sure Chris is dying over there. <laughs> uh, I was able to stock up a tiny bit today, but yeah, I'm definitely not on the level of some of the people in the Discord. It's time. Well, actually. Oh my gosh. You saw the guy that had like 3K? <laughs> oh, Terry, Terry. Not the Terry that Terry. we know, but uh, the <laughs> Terry. Jealous. That Terry Wolf, which is a uh, podcast advocate. Um, he always loves oh. being part of everything, but the man has over 3,000 Pokeballs. Oh my gosh. And like. Over 500 to 600 Ultra Bowls. I'm like... Oh, my God. His storage is insane. It, he doesn't even keep potions. I mean, he doesn't need them. <laughs> he 
He probably equips like five of each eye other item and then everything else he just like Pokeballs, 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 Pokeballs. The man is crazy. But hey, shout out to you, the Terry Wolf. So <laughs> Cheers. But anyways, that is the month of February. <laughs> Uh, pretty exciting one, I gotta say, but we'll definitely gonna have to talk about the community today and the uh, extra things that are happening here. Any thoughts so far on this, Chris, or do you think this is jam-packed month for everybody here? Um, I don't think it's too much information. Um, I do think it is uh, definitely enough to keep us, uh, you know, Yeah, uh, I'm very happy with the news. Yeah, definitely. Well, how about we talk about what... February community day really is all about and hopping along the news here. Uh, <laughs> um, Hop it, the couple cotton wheat Pokemon, sure, will be the feature during Pokemon tour in the February community day event. I, I did not know it was called that. <laughs> I didn't know either. Uh, so Shiny will be available with more frequently than well, just like any other community today. Uh, Hop it, or I'm sorry, jump gloves. Exclusive move will be the charged attack Acrobatics, which deals 110 damage in trainer battles and 100 damage in gym and raids. Chris, any thoughts on that one? If if it is a two bar move, that's going to be very very nice because uh, you know this Pokemon has Bullet Seed. Yep. And uh, it got a massive massive buff. Uh, I believe when it got uh, Energy Ball. Okay. So I'm very, very interested in if it gets a very, very good uh, flying move as well. Because um, currently... It is staff, so I'm pretty sure yeah. it's going to benefit it for sure. Yeah, currently... Oh, yeah, it has Aerial Ace now, which, you know, doesn't do crazy, crazy damage. Um, and with that, the highest it gets with its shadow form is 113 in Great League. Um... So I really do think a really strong flying type is definitely going to help it hit, uh, you know, the things it's weak to, which is like Skarmory even. Um, it should be able to hit Skarmory a lot harder, and it might actually have a chance at, uh, you know, winning back that uh, matchup with some energy. Um, so I definitely see this being very PvP um, possible. Uh, and plus, I mentioned before, this shiny is freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely something to look forward. Hey, if it's another, you know, you need to have it kind of deal when it comes to this move, I'm all for it. I mean, I don't mind seeing a diversity of Pokemons out there in the meta, so... Well, uh, plus, uh, whenever they input a new move like this, you know, you don't even need to use the move. Uh, you just need to make the opponent think you have the move. Right. Because um, then, you know, you might get that shield in a situation where you wouldn't. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, that is the move. Now, coming today's special research story, a hop, skipped, and a jump away. Yeah, no, not not not, not close, brother. Not close on that, Niantic. Go ahead uh, and jump, jump. <laughs> and skip, skip. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh one dollar of course uh equivalent to the price in your currency and uh we'll definitely let you know when the research goes live we do have to make sure that this is actually in two weeks rather than three yeah, very very soon actually yeah so two weekends from now when i come to that, i'm pretty sure i'm not have that day off so it is what it is um yes it is it's still a six hour community today um, event bonuses, 3 time cash Stardust, the lore modules will last for 3 hours, the incest will last for 3 hours, special snapshots once again, get up to 3 free raid passes from jeans during the event and 2 hours after the event, I don't know why they want us to raid, but I guess because people know that we're gonna actually catch a lot of the access coming up, uh, bonus hop, hop it, extra large candy for after, uh, from catching, uh, Skiplum, in parks. That's interesting, because we don't normally see the evolved form of Pokemon on Community Day, right? Right. Uh, we don't know if the Shiny will also be released at that point. However, I don't think so. But the extra extra large bonus on... or I'm sorry, the extra large candy bonus is kind of nice at that in art. Makes it a little bit easier to grind if you don't not want to play all day anyways. Uh, and chance of Skiplun appearing in parks alongside Hobbit, which <laughs> you would just talked about anyways. <laughs> uh... Uh, event bundles will, of course, be the Community Day box. 
uh, the 50 Ultra Balls, two Super Incubators, six Star Pieces, and an Elite Fast DM. And then a free bundle for 30 Ultra Balls will be available, and more stickers, however you can get them. Uh, so that's going to be today. Not too bad, not too shabby. I think that we have a very, very interesting Pokemon. Uh, when it first came out, I can definitely say that I was at the uh, what the F kind of deal when it came to actually this announcement. I don't know if I was super excited because, I mean, it's Hop It. But I keep forgetting that Jumpluff is one of those types of Pokemons that could be good in the end of the day if you look into it. Bon Appetit, Chris. <laughs> and yeah, so I don't know. I'm not extremely excited about this. I don't think I'd be, be going super hard on it. Uh, that's why I'm probably going to be restocking a Pokeballs a lot, using a lot of those um, gold pluses and everything. So any thoughts, anything, any... I think you're definitely going to change your mind once you see the shiny. Um, yeah, I know what But it at the same time, yeah, it's definitely not a Pokemon you're going to use uh, very often. It's just pretty to look at. That, that's That's the way I would put it. I just think they're neat. Yeah, they're okay. They're all right. There it is. However that makes me be. Anyhow. Uh, but yeah, let's hop along to the next piece of news. Oh my god. <laughs> um, we do have brand new clothes, avatar clothes, in the shop. Uh, I don't know why they have to do a separate block of this, but the Hisuian clothes are here. Inspired by the Pokemon Legends Arceus event. Or, well, not event, but the release of the game being out. Then, if you have... Actually, by the time you actually hear this podcast, you pretty much know why we're so obsessed of this game. <laughs> it's too much! But I love it! <laughs> the grind. I really wanted to start the stream actually saying, like, Hello, guys, here you go. Here's the news. Da, 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 da. We're done. Have, have a good night. I'm going to go streaming. again. <laughs> Back to Pokemon Arceus. <laughs> See, pretty much. I was streaming before this, actually. Like, literally an hour before this, uh, I I had this. And I'm probably going to be streaming a little bit more tonight. Because I want to continue the story. I'm actually loving the story. And I'll do the side quest whenever I'm not streaming. But that's still still pretty good anyways. However they may be. So, um, after this podcast, if you still want to watch me, you know, make a follow of myself playing games. That's basically how it is. But, you know. Um, Pokemon Legend Arceus. New closing. Pretty cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, there is a little bit of an update to the live event happening in Abu Dhabi. Or Dubai, however you can call it. This is the uh, part two of the uh, Gold Tour uh, live event that happens literally on Sunday. Unfortunately, because of things that are happening in, um, in the situation happening in that country... They have decided to cancel the event in Dubai, which I'm actually happy they did it with some time to notice uh, when it comes down to it. Because I imagine just canceling like two weeks or a week before the event started and people were actually started to rage because of all the tickets and everything that they were done. Yeah. That doesn't change anything when it comes to the Gold Tour on Saturday. So uh, for anybody who's even listening over there, I'm sorry, but... We do have to make sure that we stay safe as trainers. And Niantic is just doing the best for the community at that point. Uh, but with bad news, we do have good news. So the in-person events that are still going to go on, of course, are the uh, Mexico one and the Taiwan event. Um, when it comes down to it, they will have, it says here, the trainers attending any of those events will receive an event exclusive special research showing forces with other trainers to explore the habitats. And enjoy all the research has to offer. Trainers to purchase the ticket whew, to Pokemon Go to our live and, event, and attend an impact. So can look forward to encounter with Mewtwo, Anner Wars, and much more. Now I wish I can go to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the moment they say Mewtwo, that's all they changed. Anyways, uh, we can't wait to explore this immense and in, in clever places with you. Don't forget to document your journey by taking photos with your body and share them using the uh, hashtag Pokemon Go Tour. Who knows? A sleepy Snorlax may even join your photo shoot. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I want. Bro. Right, right. Especially the shiny. Anyways, it seems that shiny Pokemon will also be available. Uh, will also be appearing more frequently in Pokemon Go Tour live uh, locations. So be on the lookout. 
Ditto will also be appearing in the wild during the event. If you're lucky, you might even encounter a shiny one. Okay, you're really making me jealous at this point. Oh my. <laughs> you must be in, in an above venture locations in order to experience ticket gameplay. And only ticket holders will have uh, access to the event special reaches and other event exclusive experiences. So, for any spoofers out there, if you even get the ticket to go into the events, you will not be able to take advantage of it because you have to physically be there in the location that you are going to play. This is basically what it means. Now, of course... They can just stay there during spoofing time and just play the event, but whatever. <laughs> whatever the case may be, I don't think that, you know, you'll be able to sit down, get the ticket, um, and then just play whatever you go or whatever you are. You actually have to be in that place specifically to play it. Any thoughts, Chris? Uh, honestly, I think it's probably just going to be the same way that they did it uh, before, where people did a... Uh, Mewtwo raid before. I remember a video of Trainer Tips Nick did mm -hmm. where they would scan a QR code uh, to show that they were in the area, like, actually. I'm kind of surprised uh, they didn't do it at, uh, you know, Pokemon Go Fest on the year we went. Right. Uh, to be honest. Um, but, you know, there are ways that I can see people getting around it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if people still try to. Right. Um... But, you know, it's Niantic trying to get around uh, spoofing, you know, without, you know, directly uh, banning anyone they think are. I mean, this also yeah. kind of shuts down the people who are actually physically there um, or the people who want to, let's say, I'm going to get a ticket. Am I just going to scan the QR code and be able to play whatever I want to? No, you definitely cannot do that because <laughs> unfortunately, this is actually you have to be physically in that location. You're geometric area of the game has to be in that location to be able to experience the event. So, sorry to say, unfortunately, that's how things are. So, uh, whenever you have a ticket or not, trainers in Monterey and Kanoshi, or I guess in Taiwan, uh, will be able to participate in raids from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. local time against the falling Pokemons originally in the Kanto region, which is, of course, the Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Uh, trainees in those cities can also encounter the following Pokemon in race. Typically, these Pokemon can only be encountered in specific, very specific parts of the world. Farfish, Kangaskhan, Mr. Mine, and Tauros. Uh, all tickets are $25 US currency. I'm pretty sure your local currency equivalent will apply in those types. And then, of course, you can buy them once they go live at the time. They are non-refundable, unless they say so. <laughs> so... Uh, pretty okay. Again, let me just make it a little bit jealous just because of that. But if I get a couple of friends from Mexico or whoever's going to the event, maybe they can raid invite me to those if it allows me to. Do you think that will allow me to? Uh, I'm sure they will, honestly. Mm -hmm. Nanti got to make money. That's for sure. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, but yeah, that is the uh, extra updates for the Go Tour Live uh, celebration. But we got one last piece of news and very exciting one that happened this morning for sure. However, this news actually didn't happen until the time we actually got to the event. So, um, or by the time we, before the podcast anyways. However, um, Chris, what is the special surprise? Well, well, well. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> a Voltorb. Uh, you know, a lot of Voltorb that were found in the Hisui region of Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, game have arrived into Pokemon Go. And, oh my gosh, they were all over the place. It was like Spotlight Hour times 10,000. <laughs> and their Cantonian brother, uh, you know, was chilling with them, honestly. It was very, very cool. It was actually pretty cool because when we you play the game, you actually don't see the Kanto form of the Pokemon because we are set in the past instead of the new of of wherever we are. However, um, yeah, to be to be completely honest, it's actually an okay event. Uh, it's not shiny available, unfortunately, but uh, you're still able to catch it. Go about it. Uh, there's also another thing that you actually uh, maybe a lot of people haven't noticed about catching this Volter is that you cannot evolve it as of now. There's no evolution to Electro. Uh, or his two in Electro, like many people have mentioned. But they have opened the door. So, the Hisuian region is in Pokemon Go. 
Um, just like this is technically the coexistent event that they're doing with it. Um, it's actually kind of funny. But anyways, Bolter and Hisu and Bolter will be appearing in Pokemon Go for the duration of the Power Plant event and continue to appear during the Luna New Year event as well. If you haven't found them, now is your chance. Only the one of them will be shiny, of course. Excuse me, the his season of Heritage Story continues. Ooh, Drowsy finally got here. <clears throat> Go Rocket's invention was all a distraction while Professor Willow and the team leaders were busy dealing with the takeover. Tinker Rocket swooped in with their own electric type Pokemons and force opened the mysterious door. The team leaders returned to find the door open and whatever was inside, it was long gone. All that remains was a crumbled up piece of paper and a mysterious component indicating that this was all Tinko Rocket's doing. But Professor Willow noticed something off to the side of the chamber. Could it be a Pokeball? Well, now it's not. It's a special research because Hisuian Bolter now appears. Upon constant investigation, uh, in investigation, what seems to be a strange Pokeball was in fact a Hisuian Bolter. This Bolter bears a striking resemblance to the old fashioned Pokeballs developed a long ago in the Hisuian region. But just what kind of Pokemon are they? What sort of place was the Hisuian region? The land that we know now as Sinnoh. And are these bygone Pokemons appearing because of Tingle Rocket? Or is there some kind of mystical time travel at play? Uh, we will join the professor and to dwell into these brand new mysteries as it is. Bonuses time from... Time travel canon and Pokemon Go? Hey, we are opening up the multiverse. I'm okay with this. <laughs> uh, bonuses from 12 a.m. to uh, to 11:59 p.m. local time on Monday, January 31st. All Team Go Rocket Grunts will only have Shadow Bolter in their parties. And then, if you want to learn more about Legend Arceus or Legends Arceus, I gotta for not forget the S on that. You can always click on the blog post when it comes down about it. So interesting, very, 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 very interesting. Now. We're going to keep this spoil free because mostly because Chris hasn't actually gotten too far into the story. Thank you. <laughs> and, Thank you. Um, but there is a lot of Pokemon in the Hisuian region that has different forms of what we already have. Boltor is one of them. We have seen uh, Breviary being another one. Um, and then you already know about this, right? But I'm not going to actually say anything right now because of the game. It's only being out two days anyways. Um, but the ones that are at least confirmed... Like Basque Legions being a brand new form to Basculin. Love it. Uh, love it, love it. And uh, just a lot of different other Pokemons that you see that are different in, in different forms. Once you play the games, you can understand, but I'm pretty sure we'll give it at least a week before we can talk about it in Pokemon Go, or at least in the podcast today, especially for our 100 episode, you know? <laughs> um, but that may be, that also seems to know that we're going to have other Pokemons that could also be part of Pokemon Go very soon. <laughs> I love Chris. His face on this one. Anyhow, Chris, any thoughts? Any uh, predictions on when this might happen? I'm honestly surprised how many Hisuian uh, forms that we have. Uh, there were a lot in Gen 8, but there's like twice as much, it feels like, in this uh, in this new era. Oh, yeah. Um, so, very, very excited. Uh, personally... Uh, if I had to guess, they're probably going to release them in waves. Um, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they tried to do them kind of in the order that you saw them in Pokemon Go. Uh, or, sorry, in <laughs> in Legends uh, Arceus. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to do that, you know, uh, to try and keep it, you know, kind of in the same fashion that you'd uh, see them in the game. Right. Um probably in groups of like three or four um but you never know you never know uh and then eventually i'm expecting to see you know the one the only arceus um probably not till march if we're looking at the if we're looking at the order of uh you know legends uh that they have in raids for us currently yes definitely definitely now from what they found at least team, uh the team leaders and professor willow they found, of course, their Tingle Rocket's little, like, plan scrap paper in here. But they took some kind of box as what they seems to be part of this. Could it be the Tesseract? 
We don't even know. What's in the box? <laughs> oh my gosh. Marvel and Pokemon Go in the same universe? <laughs> like, I'm all down for it. Hey, we are opening up the multiverse. So, <laughs> uh, might as well be part of the Marvel universe while we're at it. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> um, but, uh, however that may be, you know, the Hisui region found to be the old region of Sinnoh. Um, it's interesting how they're going to trickle in, especially for Legends itself and the main series games. How they're going to be able to trickle in those types of Pokemons. Boltor, if you think about it, Boltor, the only reason Boltor is now in the appearance it is now is because of the revolution of, of generations, you know? The revolution of, the, of any type of uh, areas. Maybe you reside in the Kanto region because they wanted to just take in all the electricity, all the things that happen in, in that region instead of becoming... Um, because it is an electric type, it based electric type, but because, you know, the industrial part of things or, you know, things that are more electronical now, it had to evolve from its paperweight grass type form into a more hardened, you know, angry form at that point. So <laughs> I don't know. It seems fun to hear these types of ways and then seeing how we can actually go back to how it used to be back in the day. And I'm loving it. Just all the story and the arc of it. I'm loving it. If you guys want to see more, definitely check us out in our Twitch channels. We are going to be playing the full story of Legend Arceus to its core. And probably more. Because we're just really addicted to this game right now. So the Chris. Shiny hunting fam. Oof. Oof. Anyways. Um, but yeah. I'm excited. Chris, are you excited that we're going to see way more than we may think? Honestly, yeah. Because, uh, you know, you can only play you know, Pokemon Legends Arceus, uh, when you're, you know, at home, pretty much. Um, Pokemon Go, you can play anywhere. So being able to encounter, you know, the same Pokemon that were just released, um, it's pretty dope. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely excited. Yes, definitely, definitely. Up in parts when it comes out to it. So it's here and it's here to stay. And who knows? Maybe Pokemon Go could be the catalyst to trickle in the old Pokemons into the new Pokemons because we have a different time uh, story than any of the main series games out there. We may not be a main streamline game, but we definitely, definitely can do something when it comes to just moving the Pokemons from all unique, you know, heritage of it to the brand new world that we know today. And these Pokemons are here to stay. The other reason why they actually do these types of things is because... We want, they want to show that new Pokemons, or at least all Pokemons that we know now, have either a new form or either an old form that we don't know anything about until we actually get into these types of worlds open up in the end of the day. So I'm all for it in all those regards. So we're here. We're here to stay. So that being said that is the end of our new sections a lot to cover for sure we're actually a little bit over close to being an hour here so uh let's get a little bit of pvp section get good get wrecked here we go chris all right all right gbl ultra league is here since last monday or at least this monday of last week <laughs> um have you seen anything have you played anything have you done anything chris uh only a little bit okay. and uh funny enough i think my first battle i actually saw a little bit of wellrin um personally i've been trying to play a uh, open uh ultra league i still play the same team that i have always uh lapras uh giratina altered talon flame <laughs> <laughs> talon flame is such a good closer if you can get rid of their shields early on and uh, i feel a lot of times with this team um it honestly comes down to you know just uh out stalling them a lot of people don't like that but uh you know in ultra league that is something you got to be you know ready for oh yeah um but yeah uh not too much of a meta shift other than warren being a part of the meta now yeah no that's for sure in the end of the day again i haven't seen that much so i always ask but um you never know even this community they coming up may actually do a little bit of switching here and there, if you want close to a uh, ultra league viable jump off in that regard, so it may not even take that much to power up, but I don't think it actually goes any higher than it should be, because mm -hmm. even at level forty is like fourteen ninety six. I think I don't I don't know. Wait, 
Uh, yeah, so Jump Bluff actually only goes up to 1850 at max level 50. So definitely not a candidate for uh, Ultra, so it might actually just stay in the lower leagues in that regard. Yeah, it's it's walled by a lot of things, too. Yeah. Uh, the typing is not as good for it. Uh, Tropius is just a much better uh, flying grass type a lot of the times. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, well, you never know. We may see next year, actually, go to our, uh What's that region? <laughs> Hoenn? <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, my Dude. God. When that happens, that's going to be insane. Hey, gold tours are here to stay, guys. This is going to be the new norm. I'm here for it because there's always something to do between, you know, the beginning end of middle and end of the year in the other regard. So, yeah, I'm cool with that. But that being said, Chris, any fraction updates? Faction updates? Yeah, yeah, we got a faction update. Um, so Switch Masters versus Wu Tangela Clan. <laughs> It was uh, very awesome. Uh, we actually started the week out with uh, our boy Aaron, uh, WG21. Uh, actually got a 3-0 for his battles. Very, very hyped when that happened. And then uh, right after that, I was able to get a 2-1. Um, so we start off very strong, you know, 5 versus, uh, you know, 5-1. to one. And then uh, we just had to, you know, pick up sticks after that. Um, so, you know, we got... Uh, two more two ones between uh, King Ducks Pool, Loudmouth. Uh, they were both able to get two ones. Uh, our boy Captain Shook and Adonis Creatus uh, were able. Uh, Creatus was able to get uh, one twos both, and uh, False Water was able to get a one two. So literally, uh, everybody on the squad was able to get at least one point, and that really helped solidify us. Uh, so I'm very very happy with the squad. And uh, we were able to win with a very comfortable 12-9. Uh, nice. Um, you know, huge congrats to, you know, all my fellow teammates. Um, very, very happy uh, with this being our first battle of the season. Uh, so I'm very, very hopeful that the rest of them go uh, well, too. Can't say it will run as smoothly, but hey, the grind is a grind. You've got to be uh, prepared and ready to go for anything that the game oh, yeah. might suffer. So. Yeah, we did a lot more practice this time, so oh, yeah. hopefully we can keep up uh, the a rest good of trick. it. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Well, congratulations, Chris, for a beginning of fractions uh, and anybody in the Switch Masters, so congratulations. Uh, keep us updated for sure. We'll definitely cover every single week for this. Uh, with that being said, I believe that that's everything. So, Chris, is there anything else that we have to cover? Um... No, no, I think we covered everything very well until uh, Niantic drops a bunch of news right after our podcast. Oh, God, that's going to be tomorrow for <laughs> sure. Because, I mean, they're going to give us more information about the uh, Lunar event tomorrow, so. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I mean. Niantic, you always like that. However, though, um, that be being said, before we end the podcast, this is our 99th episode. We technically did post 100 episodes of the podcast in podcast uh, uh, fees. But this is basically the Purify Podcast 99 episode of it may be. We did have a couple of bonus episodes, so we are technically over 100, but I'm still kind of as 99 no matter what. Next week, however, guys, we are actually going to hit our 100 episode. And that also coexists with being our two-year anniversary as us being able to do this podcast. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Chris, I, you know, for two years so far, this podcast has been a dream. Thank you so much for always being here. Thank you for putting up with us. Thank you, you know, uh, I know it's going to be a lot of ranting, but, you know, we, there's still more to come, guys. This is not the end. This is not, this is only the beginning. Um, you know, we, we're not close to what Lurup is, you know, five years in the making, but, um, but it makes baby, we, we love this community. We love everything that we do. Uh, Pokemon Go Wise, the community we created over our Discord. If you want to join it, definitely we are there. Most of the time we talk not just Pokemon Go, but any other source of news out there for all the things that we love, Pokemon Wise in that regard. Um, but yeah, just a lot of different things. Uh, I could keep going on, but I'm thinking I'm going to save it more for the next week's podcast. Um, don't expect much. I don't think I can have too much going on. Uh, I will try to contact a few people, if anything, 
and see how we can do. Maybe have a guest, an old guest or anything like that. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, don't get to hops out, but we'll make Maybe an American cake. <laughs> hey, we can do that. You know, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that being the case, of course, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for listening for the podcast uh, every single week. We are in the podcast services feeds between Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Our Heart Radio, Stitcher, and now um, you know, many other places to go. If you can leave us a review, we'd really appreciate it. Social media, Pure Let It Go, myself, and PKMM Trigger Please for Chris. Uh, we are streaming in our Twitch. Uh, big stream tomorrow. <laughs> um, we are streaming in our uh, allocated uh, Twitch channels. And you can always email us info at the purified podcast at gmail.com if you want to, of course. Uh, we definitely would love to hear from you guys for our 100 episodes. So if you guys have anything, um, that DMs are open, guys. My DMs are open. Um, and then don't forget to check us out at the purifiedpodcast.com, the professor network. With that being said, Chris, it's time to take us away for the night. All right, all right, all right. Okay, 99 episodes. 99 episodes next week i really hope uh you guys come on by and uh you know congratulate us on getting to 100 um you know we wouldn't have been doing it without you guys uh listening in um it's been a really fun really fun time and uh pokemon go is still holding strong uh so really don't expect to be slowing down the news any anytime soon uh yeah uh very excited to see you guys, and I'm very excited to see what's in the box that Team Go Rocket <laughs> yeah. took. What is in the box? Oh, uh, so, yeah. Hope you guys have a fantastic time, and uh, see you next time. Peace. I'll leave you guys with a joke. I got 99 <laughs> problems, but Team Go Rocket ain't one of them. Anyways, guys, keep purifying them, and we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>